20 to 300 people for all types of parties. Madura Restaurant, located at 288 Ward Avenue, East Providence. Owner Al Milo welcomes you to Madeira. Madeira Restaurant, Ward Avenue, East Providence. Keep your car happy, you see how we feel. Come to the freeway, we'll keep your car clean. With three full service locations, you're never far from the freeway. Visit freewaycarwash.com for $2 off the works wash at the first full service car wash in Rhode Island. Freeway Car Wash, Oneyville, or Freeway Car Wash, Dexter Street, Pawtucket, and Freeway Car Wash, East Providence. Why do it yourself when Freeway does it all, including vacuum? Pro Joe's Reader's Choice for number one car wash, Freeway Car Wash. WPRO Sports Red Sox fail again to clinch the AL East title, losing to the Astros 3-2. Yankees win against the Blue Jays 4-0. Patriots host the Carolina Panthers Sunday at 1 o'clock. Foxborough, as always, the game is here on News Talk 630 and 99.7 FM, WPRO. From the New England Truck Solutions Traffic Center, here is your Burger King Regional Traffic. Sponsored by Burger King Mix and Match. Two sandwiches for just $6. Choose from original chicken sandwich, the big fish sandwich, and the Whopper. All part of the two for six deal only at Burger King, where taste is king. So those DOT cameras looking good. Roads are drying out. No delays in and out of Providence. Just a little busyness in front of Providence Place Mall in 95. South County, not bad. Of course, you want to keep in mind there's going to be some brake tapping and hesitation going on here. 138 on the eastern side of the Newport Pell Bridge through your construction zone. Looking pretty good through the construction zone on 195. I the repeat. East Providence and no troubles over by The whole point of buying that was like you put it behind you. Some uh, barrier set up over there. I forgot it. Okay. So did I. Revolving slowly. From the Seascape Lawn Care Weather Center, here's meteorologist Steve Kravitz with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Oh, good morning, Doug. We're in for a fairly cloudy day today. Hey, Maya. Uh, can I hear? I can't hear you. Okay. Um. Here's an alternative number for Jeff, Colonel Richardson. This is his landline, and I would think may get better reception. 792-8316. Okay. Yes. Not like everyone has his number. <laughs> Maybe. Not like everyone has his number. <laughs> I just, everybody in the world now is going to call him. Well, they should call him. He's a man of great wisdom. Hey everybody, you guys are getting a sneak preview behind the scenes. Hey, we're coming up. The following paid program is furnished by Dr. Steve Federico. It's for basic entertainment and informational purposes only and is solely responsible for its content. It does not necessarily reflect the views of Cumulus Media, its management, or its staff. News Talk 630 and 97FM. Intellectual Medicine with Dr. Pederuti. Join Dr. Pederuti as he guides people towards living the 120 lifespan. While retaining youth, he'll apply logic, reason, and scientific evidence to address conditions that drain people of their joy and vitality while protecting them from the harmful aspects of conventional medicine. Now, here's Dr. Steve Pederuti. Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Steve Pederuti, and you're listening to Intellectual Medicine on WPRO, where we talk about ways to extend, improve, and enhance your lifespan and your life, uh, quality of life. We, our, our goal is to help you live the 120 year lifespan and to do so in a youthful manner. And each week we discuss on specific attributes of that objective. We like to reflect upon things that are happening in orthodox medicine, how they may help you or even hurt you. And today's no different. We're gonna be talking about a range of topics. We will be giving you advice on what to do in the event of nuclear fallout. Unfortunately, it's been in the news, and we have as a guest today, Colonel Jeff Richardson from the United States Marine Corps, retired, will be giving his insights into the uh, international politics, and more importantly for you, the listener, you know, what can you do if all of a sudden a news flash comes across the screen that says, hey, a, a, a nuclear device was detonated someplace in the Northeast, what things can we do? And there are some things that make sense, and we'll, we'll talk about those. Shannon, we're also going to be reflecting a little bit on the flu shot that we talked about last week. Um, I know you have some thoughts and opinions on that, and it'll be, it'll be interesting for us to highlight that for our listeners. And we're going to be talking as well about uh, some new research regarding the flu in pregnancy and some data that our listeners will be interested to hear. 
We're also going to be highlighting a little bit of breast cancer um, genetic risk. We'll be talking about the BRCA gene, who should get tested, how much does it cost, what does it reveal, and how should you handle that kind of genetic information. And if time permits, we're going to tell you how to neutralize some of the toxic effects of alcohol consumption. So we've got a broad range of topics, um, and we'll start out just by wishing you all a beautiful morning. Shannon, how are you feeling this morning? Great. A little, a little chilly here. <laughs> That's right. expected, right? I mean, it, it is almost October. This is. Do you like this better than the humidity that we had like, well, last week? Well, no one week? likes that. No, I don't know. But, Some people do. Oh, no. So, it's like a jungle. Flo, you know, oh. Florida's jam-packed full of people that it's like true. that sort of thing. <laughs> it's true. Right? I don't know. Yeah. That's good. I'm Too glad much. they like it. It keeps them down there. I don't want them up here. Stay down there, Floridians, and enjoy your, your humidity. Well, some good news from Rhode Island. We turned out, turns out that we are third in the nation in energy efficiency. The State Energy Efficiency Award given by the American Council for Energy Efficiency ranked Rhode Island number three, Shannon. Pretty good, huh? I'm kind of shocked. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm pretty shocked. proud. You know, we're in the top three in the nation in an important category. Now, this is partly to do with your surcharge on your electric bill that you pay you probably don't know you pay it. Did you no, know we pay that? I had no idea. There's yeah. so many fees and taxes, and <laughs> how would you know? Just look at the bottom line. I write a check, and the lights stay on. That's what I know. Um, but that surcharge, folks, entitles you to a free energy audit from Rhode Islanders Saving Energy. The acronym is RISE. In fact, we're having this audit done at our new house. We are. We yeah. are. I never knew about it. No, see, no. I don't think I need the audit to realize that when I sit next to the window and I feel a breeze <laughs> blowing through that something's not quite right. <laughs> but this is something that can help save energy, cut down the amount of energy that has to be produced. And this, folks, is where we believe our focus should be. Energy conservation and non-carbon-based energy production. Let's put our money and our effort into that pathway. And, you know, political leaders were rightly proud of this achievement. They should be rightly shamed by the idea of plopping a new a power plant, not nuclear, but a, a fossil fuel power plant into Burrowville. This continues to bother me, Shannon. I think it's wrong to put it there. I don't think anybody wants it except for the people that are going to make money from putting it there. And you know what? If it doesn't go there, I'm willing to bet the lights will stay on. And I'm willing to pay a few more pennies if it means having non-fossil-based fuel. Now, recently, the Narragansett Indian tribe stood up to the plate and offered backup water source for the Burrowville power plant. Well, great. Then, Why? Why would they do that? Well, they do it because they get money to be paid. Ugh. And because Burrowville is the power plant, people are having trouble getting water to their plant. They need water. So here you are, right, Shen? You go to Burrowville. Why do people go to Burrowville? Because it's quiet. You got trees. It's country. And all of a sudden, they plop not only the plant in front of you, but these semi-tractor trailer trucks are going to be buzzing through there all day, every day, bringing water, spewing diesel fuel, clogging up the roads, damaging the asphalt. Folks, these are the ancillary costs that are unaccounted for. Terrible. You know, you want to put it there, but put it on the Narragansett Indian tribe if they want to give them water. Right. That, right. I'm sure they don't want it there. Yeah, but, but in reality, nobody should want this. When they build it, we will become more dependent on fossil fuel. It is a self-perpetuating dynamic. Until such time that we create a demand for non-fossil fuel, we'll continue to lean on these power plants. In a recent review, Rhode Island was found to be one of the most dependent states in the nation on fossil fuel. Tied with West Virginia, over 90% of our energy coming from fossil fuel. We need to change that, folks. Um, it will help reduce our cancer rates. It will help reduce lead toxicity in our environment, which correlates into brain degradation. Rhode Island has one of the highest per capita rates of cancer in the nation. And we like to, not like to, but we have come to accept this as a status quo. We don't scrutinize the fact that why do people get cancer? And is there something about our environment that we can address that will diminish that risk? We don't tend to scrutinize why do people get demented when there is no genetic trigger that is absolutely known. And it has to do with the toxic effect on our brain over time. We'll be talking about alcohol today, Shan, and you know, that, that can be a brain corroder if not managed properly. So can lead. So can repetitive microtrauma. 
So all these issues are on our on our front burner. But in the couple of minutes we have left, I do want to reflect a little bit. How am I doing, Maya? I got, I got one minute? Okay, well, we're going to be setting up Jeff Richardson. He's coming on board next. Colonel Richardson has served proudly in the Marines. He's now retired, and he has some special insights to share with us. We're going to talk a little bit about North Korea. Um, what should we contemplate doing about this nation? And although we seem far removed from national politics, our collective voice forms opinion that guides national policy. So I think it's incumbent upon every thinking American to contemplate this path and to render an opinion. What should we do, folks, with North Korea? Preemptive strike, Cold War containment a la Russia. This is an unprecedented scenario. And uh, Colonel Richardson will share some thoughts. And then what should you put in your emergency kit when the balloon goes up and the radiation starts flowing over us? What should you do? We want to keep you alive 120 years. That means not being detonated by a nuclear device. I'm Dr. Pedroto. You're listening to WPRO Intellectual Medicine. We'll be back after this break. I'm going to get a chance to get to the whole kneeling thing. Maybe I'll do it at the end. Kneeling? Yeah, the, oh. the, pit, the flag thing. Yeah. I think we beat Burrowville to, like, the ground. That's where the invention goes because it tied it into this other thing. We haven't talked about it in, in a long time. I know, but it's saying you only have like so many minutes. Traffic is still heavy. I think. We can use it. Well, it's just tied into the whole energy efficiency award. I, I think it's a paradox that we get that award, and at the same time, we're the leading nation, leading state in the nation with fossil fuel burning. And as if we're not doing well enough with fossil fuel, we got to double it down with another plant. Not cool. It's not cool, man. We gotta, we gotta create a demand in order to fill it. People, you know, it's like a what is that? Water flowing downhill will take the path of least resistance. You forgot to bring that thing, huh? I did. No, it's still tight. Hey, we're here. We're here. We're on time. Yeah. yeah, we should talk more about water purity, too. It's a good topic. This guy on the talking about water filter in your home. Feel bad for Puerto Rico. They got wiped out. There's literally no relief effort that will be adequate to the task at hand. And the only thing you can do is be criticized because it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Right. They need everything. Yeah, 3.4 million people need everything right now. You know, some look at that. We're seeing pictures right now, folks, of Puerto Rico. Awful. It's going to take years and years of recovery. And the place was a mess to begin with. Their economy was in disarray. Their infrastructure was was weak. Mm. I think too. You know, you had all this relief in Texas and you know, in Florida, and now that gets hit, and it's like, well, we already have all of our people in all the other places. You know? Absolutely, that's part of it. Yeah. So much we can do. Although. When you look at what we do in um, other nations around the world, you know, trillion dollar commitment to Afghanistan. Oh, uh, yeah. You start yeah. thinking, hey, you know, um, maybe we should redirect some of that effort back home. You would think. We offer 10 cabinet lines and complete kitchens delivered in as little as five days. KCCN has more than 500 colors of granite and quartz countertops to choose from and on site fabrication with installation. See, now, they're saying what went wrong. It's been like, what, a week since a hurricane hit? Right. Nothing went wrong yet. Nothing went wrong. We're just, what went wrong? I'll tell you what went wrong. A hurricane hit. <laughs> That's what went wrong. And it's time to just take a breath and peace to stop being so hypercritical. Right. Yeah. I know. They, with everything. Everything. There's always something that you can do better. Always. You look back and be like, oh. Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm back. It's Dr. Pedro. I'm here with Shannon. 
on a beautiful Saturday morning in Rhode Island, Southern New England, the best place in the world to live. Because we are number three in the nation with energy efficiency, by golly. You know who's in front of us, Shan? Yeah, who? The dreaded Massachusetts. No. They are. The dreaded really? Massachusetts. Can't you just not stand them? Oh. Look, I, I think that we should just invade Massachusetts and annex Attleboro. Like, why not? I know. It's really... It's, it really belongs so to close. us. It belongs yes. to us. It's just wrong. Like, we, we have a militia, don't we? Mm -hmm. We call it the National Guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Hey. Well, listen, speaking of military things, we have Colonel Richardson on the line. Uh, good morning, Colonel Richardson. Jeff, it's great to have you on the show again. Well, Jeff and I go way back. I've known uh, Jeff Colonel Richardson since he was in eighth grade, been a leader his entire life. And uh, Jeff rose to has risen to the rank of Colonel in the Marines. Had a little bit of experience, don't you, Jeff, with regard to um, the military's perspective on uh, nuclear, the potential for nuclear fallout. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, I, I kind of want to reflect on your thoughts regarding the situation in North Korea. It seems like a, um, a losing proposition no matter which way we turn. Uh, you know, do we do a, a Cold War containment like we did with Russia, uh, or, or do we approach a different tactic? Um, what, what are your thoughts? Thank you for clarifying that. Right. Now, if, if the military options are, don't look great and there's a potential consequence, inevitably, um, there has been a history of negotiations with, South, with North Korea, um, and that hasn't gone so well either. Uh, is it worth sitting at the table and talking to these folks? Right. So we're talking with uh, we're talking with Colonel Jeff Richardson, retired Marine, giving his personal opinions regarding some of the circumstance in North Korea. And North Korea, as explained by Colonel Richardson, by Jeff, has a history of reneging on deals, a history of not allowing people into that country. So really, even if we get them to the table and we negotiate what looks like a good deal, we end up losing because that deal is likely to be broken. So here we've got a bad, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put out a, a solution that I think we should do, Jeff, and I want your thought. I'm sensing a Neville Chamberlain moment here in politics. We've got a dictatorship that is hell bent on harming the U.S. It's like Hitler's Mein Kampf. He told you what he was going to do before he did it. You couldn't believe anybody would do that. So you passively allowed him to grow his power base until World War II is ignited. Now, North Korea has told us that they want to kill us. They want to drop a bomb on us. That's their stated goal. 
and we are passively letting them build up their capacity while we dither about whether we should have another negotiated settlement that will be broken or how painful it will be to attack them. I see pain as an inevitable consequence of cutting this thread off, and I say the best time to do it is sooner than later. You can surround that country, and I'm not military, so this is where I want your opinion. I'm just a medical guy in the Army. But I know that we can launch a thousand cruise missiles tomorrow and obliterate or weaken their capacity for retaliation. I remember, Jeff, when we were going into the first desert storm, the mother of all battles. Iraq had a million-man army. They had the third largest standing army in the world. And they assured us that they were going to put a reign of horror upon us should we attack. We wiped them out in about three days. The more they massed their troops, the easier they were to kill. And that chain of command was shallow. The minute the head got chopped off, the Iraqis surrendered in droves. I say the same thing would happen in North Korea. I, I know it sounds awful, but we just need to talk to China, get them on board, and then do a preemptive strike and obliterate them. That, not all the people. I want to kill the soldiers and the missiles. What do you think? Right. Yep. So we're talking again with Colonel Jeff Richardson, retired U.S. Marine, giving his personal opinions. And Jeff, I heard you make two very salient points, of course. One, that um, Korea, North Korea, uses these uh, rocket tests as advertising for their weapon systems that they sell because they need money. And it also advertises to their population the value of keeping these murderous goons in power so they can prevent the U.S. from overrunning them. I say both of your points reinforce my notion that preemptive strike is reasonable because we know that North Korea would sell their nuclear technology to ISIS in a heartbeat and that ISIS has the money to buy it and the will to use it. How do we cut that off and you know, wh wh what else would we recommend? Great. So, so San Francisco's glowing, but we know who sent the bomb. Good. <laughs> Yeah, but couldn't, couldn't they erase that fingerprint in a dirty nuclear device? So that we're, again, we're talking with Colonel Richardson, retired U.S. Marine. Jeff, everything you're saying makes sense, but none of it gives me comfort nor dissuades me from my preemptive attack. I need an alternative strategy, Colonel. What do you got?
So your, your advocacy then, Jeff, is for ongoing sanctions and slow, steady pressure over time. Okay, and I, you know, I think that's a very reasonable approach and it may be the right one. And, you know, it has been shown to work vis-a-vis -vis Russia, although I maintain that North Korea is a little different and that they are more of a threat even than, than the Soviet Union was back in the day. Well, Colonel Richardson, Jeff, as always, it's great having your insights, folks. Uh, that's Colonel Jeff Richardson, retired Colonel, U.S. Marines, giving his thoughts and opinions based upon his long experience in the military as well as a historian regarding some of the uh, aspects of North Korea. And when we come back, I promise you, we're going to give you the bullet points, what you need to know, what you need to prepare for in the event of nuclear fallout, should it occur. And then we'll be finishing talking about the flu shot, genetic testing for breast cancer, and how to protect your brain from alcohol. Sounds like good topics to stay tuned. And we will be back right after the Revolution Softwash News Center report from Doug Lazette. Doug, what's happening out there today? After there's an opening in President Trump's cabinet, and it's a big job. The nation's health secretary oversees a Pardon me? No, we're going to cycle them off. So interesting. Yeah. You know, looking here, just the... It's chilling. Mm -hmm. Because you, you don't have good options. You sit there and you try to contain them, and in five years, they go from having 60 nuclear devices to having 600. Right. That's what I mean. You can't... Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, we'll stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. They're not. And once it gets strong enough, they start to influence countries around them by virtue right. of their threat. Right. I mean, it's horrible to contemplate. But look, we went into Iraq because we thought they had weapons of mass destruction. Iraq never had weapons. Iraq never committed to attack us and never said that a bomb on the U.S. would be inevitable, which we've heard from leadership in North Korea. A bomb will be inevitable. That's pretty clear to me. Right. <laughs> Say, look, as soon as we get a capacity, we're going to drop right. a bomb on you. Mm -hmm. And building and building and building, and you guys just keep sitting there. And, yep. and you know what? They don't have to drop the bomb. That, that nuclear um, fingerprinting, it's not that precise. In a dirty nuclear weapon, that can get muffled. And they can say, oh, you know, we're not sure where it came from. And then China has never been an ally toward us when it comes to international politics in regard to North Korea. I mean, how many more sanctions can we... Can we get to? I think it's, it's a joke now. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do it. It's, it's. Yeah. Now we're gonna we're, we're gonna you, you know really no the sanctions are coming. Right. Yeah, right. These are. Or, right. or yeah, North Korea is gonna I say. I triple oh, dog dare right. you. <laughs> I would totally do that. You're right. We're oh gee, I would say, huh? Oh. Yeah. They, have, they have a robust black market that keeps the leadership in Mercedes and caviar, mm -hmm. and that's all they care about. Mm -hmm. They don't care if people are starving. You know, you can argue that, not argue, inevitably an attack on North Korea would harm civilians. That is non-military. I mean, that's part of war. But their government's harming them right now. Right, but I'm, I'm saying to say, like, no, we're not going to do something because civilians may die. I mean, that's just yeah. part of it. Yeah. Inevitable. Yeah. You could try hard to minimize it, but going to happen. You know, and this may sound terrible, but I'd rather have dead North Koreans than dead Americans. Mm. You know, do you think they care about civilian casualty right. here? God, no. You know, were enemies yeah. thinking twice when they flew planes into the, into the tower? Ooh, there was a military target, right? <laughs> yeah. So the break that we need in hair growth, by the way, mm. is genetically... Um, culturing hair follicles. How cool would it be if they could take a sample of your own hair follicle cool and, grow them. and grow them dish. in addition, addition and yeah, put them right. in there? Like, right? Come on. Why can't we do that? I just don't think we're trying hard enough. We're not. Good, and, you know, okay, I get it. HIV is kind of important, but how about hair? That's where the government should be spending its money. <sighs> Speaking from a, hair growth. From a follicular That's challenge a market. You, want, you want to talk about you know, increasing um, the economy. Yeah. You know, a lot of people would be into that.
men up to 85850. That's M-E-N. Yeah, just one of those. What's that, baby? No, that's a supplement. Oh, it was, oh, it's one of those, like, male-enhancing supplements? <sighs> yeah, good luck with that one, buddy. The next guy I come in and says, wow, I took, like, Testo Boost. <laughs> and, you know, my sex life went through the roof. Good luck. Okay, can you imagine actually walking and buying that stuff? You gotta be like, uh, like Frog on American You better be buying it with, like, some condoms or something. Well, you know, <laughs> they probably buy condoms to cover their lack of capacity. That's insane. It's embarrassing. Go so talk to your doctor. You gotta get the, the real deal here. We'll talk about that, too, right? New yeah. study out from the Journal of Urology. We'll have to talk about that. this service is free for card members. Just sign up online. It's our way of looking out for you. Not just a long break. Learn more at discover.com slash yeah. Limitations apply. There we go. Now, back to intellectual medicine with Dr. Pettorini. Call in now at 438-WPRO or 1-800-321-WPRO. Hey, folks, I am back. It's Dr. Pettorini. Time to lighten the mood after talking nuclear holocaust. Really, it's not even holocaust. We're talking about tactical interventions. You know, what do we do to protect ourselves? Well, what you can do to protect yourself in your home is should there be nuclear fallout? Okay, so let's imagine you just see a news flash that a nuclear device went off in um, Connecticut at Groton. You know, they targeted that. And the prevailing winds are going to blow the fallout over the Northeast. Number one thing, shelter in place. Don't try to run from it. Your car doesn't protect you. You can't predict where the fallout's going to go and it's moving faster than your car can move. So stay out of your vehicle. If you're at home, get to your basement. That's where the radiation is least likely to penetrate. If you have access to a fallout shelter and it's within five minutes, then get there. Now this requires some premeditated planning. How about other things you can do? Keep your skin covered. That fallout actually can get on your skin and the radiation can be amplified in its effect. Now they make a product it's a towelette to wash off nuclear debris. Company Biodex makes a product called Radiac Wash. That's R-A-D-I-A-C-W-A-S-H. Little towelettes, you can put them in your bomb shelter kit. And in the event of this type of debris, the first thing you do, the kids get home from school, you come from, from outside, get your clothes off if they've been exposed, and wipe your body down with this Radiac Wash. The um, iodine, what about that? The K1 iodine tablets are available. There's one called Iostat, I-O-S-A-T, Iostat. Now that'll help your thyroid gland to absorb non-radioactive iodine, thereby blocking the absorption of radioactive, um, iod radioactive isotopes. It will only protect your thyroid gland, doesn't protect the rest of your body. Um, so you want to be able to shelter in place to avoid the gamma radiation effect. You can't smell it. You can't see it. You will need some supplies, the usual type of supplies, like a radio, so you know when you've, you've been given the all clear. You'll need food and water, roughly a gallon of water per day. Uh, what can you do to, like, shelter your basement? I know it sounds trivial, but duct tape and plastic to cover windows and other openings will have some value. Sandbags have value. The problem there is going to be timing. You know, the, if this occurs, unless you've got a stockpile of sandbags ready to go, it's not going to be of much value. How about creating a shelter? Well, some people have gone to that extent. I don't know if the expense is worth it. And the problem with creating a shelter is um, picture yourself in the shelter with people banging on the door. How are you going to feel? Mm. You know, that's just... My, my dad used to say, you know, if, if the nuclear bomb ever comes, I want it to land right in my lap. <laughs> I want, to, I want to be the first one to go. Uh, but it's not necessarily an all or nothing. Look, if you're in the flash zone of a nuclear bomb, you're gone. But how about if you're on the fringe? If you do the right thing in the days, hours and days afterward, your lifetime consequence can be profoundly uh, affected and improved. A lot of this information is available on the CDC websites that you can go to. And the real risk, as I was highlighting with uh, Jeff Richardson, Colonel Richardson, is that dirty nuclear device going off and increasing lifetime risk of cancer. Pectin, P-E-C-T-I-N, is a supplement that is known to be a radiation detoxifying agent. 
keeping some of that supplement on hand would make sense. That's also the, um, the, the uh, substance that is found in apples. So iodine tablets make some sense. Sheltering in place is most critical. Having uh, towelettes available to wipe off radiation that uh, contaminates you. You can buy a suit. I'm laughing because the suits are kind of absurd. I think th actually, I think that's like the best idea. The suit? The suit. Well, he, okay, on. here's the problem. You buy the suit, it's like a $500 expense, and you got this space suit sitting there in case the balloon goes up, right? And you're ready. Okay, how do you go to the bathroom? How do you eat? I'm sure there's. You gotta take the suit off. Ways. Put the, put the food in before you get in. Now, Shannon, do you believe in, in the suit thing? <laughs> do, you, do you want to buy I'm suits for me? You and me and the kids? Like a garbage bag or something. She's walking around like with these spacesuits on. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, it's better than what? Going under the desk? Well, yeah, right? yeah. That, the going under the desk, yeah, that, that's not so good. But, um, well, let's, let's talk a little bit about, about uh, um, what do you want to do? Breast cancer, flu shot. What do you want to do next, Shannon? Let's do, let's do flu. Let's follow up with that. I want to follow up on the flu. Okay, so... Folks, we talked about flu last week with Dr. David Lowe, infectious disease specialist, and I had some, some critical feedback from some of my functional medicine colleagues, those in pharmacy, who felt that the value of the flu shot is profoundly overstated, that the risk of acquiring the flu can be otherwise mitigated through healthy lifestyle interventions, and that they are not endorsing the recommendations for broad use of the flu shot. And Shannon, you and I were talking about the validity of some of those concerns, that the flu shot is certainly not always known to be effective. Um, and although the rate of flu conversion is relatively small, uh, I, I feel as a healthcare provider that it's, it's my responsibility to take the flu shot so that I don't put my patients at risk. Now, I don't perceive significant hazard from taking a flu shot personally. It may not work but I can live with its lack of effectiveness. In some cases, those of us who are healthy will have a low-grade cold that is actually the flu, and we can spread the infection without knowing we have it. Uh, now, the other concern that, that Shannon, you voiced, was the flu mist, and that really kind of shakes our confidence. Well, yeah, that was out for, what, three years, four years, and last year they said, oops, it was a 0% effective rate. Now, the flu Zero. mist, for those who don't recall, it was a nasal spray, yeah, and it was live. touted. It was a live virus, mm -hmm. and it was touted as being superior, superior. to the shot. Right. Because they said, oh, it's a live virus. It will work better, and that kids wouldn't mind it so much. Now, for three years, did your kids ever get that? They did. Yeah. Now, how does it make you feel knowing it absolutely had no value? Well, horrible. You think then, you know, you're pushing the flu shot, which I'm not a huge advocate to begin with. Right. Um, and now you're telling me for three years we gave, what, millions of, you know, kids these, not injections, but, you know, nasal sprays, right. and they didn't even work. And we're subjecting them to all these chemicals, and, you know, who knows? It, it's a legitimate concern. And, you know, from talking to Dr. Lowe, we know that there's a two-week run-up uh, between getting the flu shot and its effectiveness. Could we simply wait and watch the prevailing trend? regarding the flu over the country and then make a decision when it's more time appropriate. I think that's reasonable. There's another study out that showed that the flu shot in the first trimester of pregnancy, and women who are pregnant, if they receive the flu shot in the first trimester, had an increased rate of spontaneous miscarriage. And Shan, I thought it was interesting. The authors of the study was sponsored by the government. They were trying to look at this correlation. It did not exist with the old flu shot. When they augmented the flu shot to try to cover H1N1, then they noted the correlation. And the authors published that data. They said it doesn't prove causality, but it needs to be out there in the public domain. And then think about it. If you're, this affects my thought. If you're in the first trimester of pregnancy and it can potentially cause harm and you don't know if it's going to have benefit, and the flu shot itself, the benefit only lasts for six months, then it makes sense to delay that flu shot if, get it, if getting it at all. Uh, th that study is waiting for validation. But the idea was, hey, if you get the flu shot, your baby will be healthier because it'll have the antibodies against flu. And um, those antibodies only last six months. And the best way to boost immunity, I mean, Shannon, you have a lot of experience in neonatal health care. Um, what do you think of, like, breastfeeding, right? Doesn't that help? That, that's, that's what you do. Forget the flu shot. Forget injecting yourself. I'm not telling everyone not to get a flu shot, but that's the best way to do it. Mom's healthy. 
Yep. Breastfeed. So, and when they breastfeed, they get more than just food. What else is happening there? Well, only the immunity is getting passed to the baby. Antibodies. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. We got just about a minute left. Man, this time goes by quickly. We need to talk about breast cancer and the BRCA test. Uh, when we come back after the break, we're going to talk about who should get tested for breast cancer, what's the genetic risk versus the environmental risk, and what do you do with a test result if it comes back positive. 12% of women will develop breast cancer at some point in the span of their lives. What can you do that will tilt the field to your advantage? 1.3% of women will develop ovarian cancer in the span of their lives. Is a test worth doing? I'm Dr. Steve Pederuti. This is Intellectual Medicine. When we come back, how to gauge your risk for breast and ovarian cancer and what to do with that information. See you after the break. From East Greenwich to Easton, East Providence to Exeter, you're listening to... Locks are flying by, man. We'd be, we'd be able to get one thing in. So the opioid CBS thing, I won't have time for. Um, I'm, the alcohol thing, I may not have to, probably won't have time for. Although we do have, we do have one more section, so that may be a nice thing to finish with, kind of a little bit lighter. We talked about the flu and miscarriage. We're gonna come back and we talk about the breast cancer and the um, bracket testing. At a hundred bucks for a test, would you get it done? Absolutely. Can kind of fire it up then. Mm -hmm. Futura. I think it's almost better for the women that, um, you know, are so concerned about it. They have, you know, a mom that had it, the family history of it. Well, in those type of cases, the insurance companies may well pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's reasonable to get that test and then to discuss it with your primary care doc. Sometimes they recommend talking to a geneticist. Well, good oh, luck getting yeah, an appointment. Well, I know. There are like three of them in the state. I know. And it's going to cost you a few hundred bucks just to sit and check. It's going to cost you more to have the conversation than to get the test. Right. I just think it's, you know, if you have, let's say, a mom and an aunt with breast cancer, you get the test, now you rack a positive. It's a huge difference. I know. But how about if you don't have that genetic history, but you want to know? No, right. Then that's just peace of mind, and, you know, you get it done. Kind of a day can't make up its mind out there, right? I know, and that's all it looks like it's mine. Yeah, it's going to be like all day, I think. We need to do some research. Looks so promising. Yeah, I gotta admit, man, I do like Sly and the Family Stone, right? One of my favorite groups of all time. It was the first rock concert I ever went to, Shan. We took a bus from East Greenwich to Providence. It was a big deal. Might have been my first time to the city, in quotes. It was very intimidating. You know, high school kid at a rock concert. I didn't know how to behave, but it was fun. Well, we're back. I'm Dr. Pederuti. This is Intellectual Medicine, along with Shannon. We're now talking about breast cancer and the genetic risk. 12% of women will develop breast cancer in the span of their lives. It is a pandemic in the United States, folks. It does not affect every nation the way it does us. Southeast Asia and East Asia has a much lower rate of breast cancer until they move to the United States and it skyrockets. What are we doing that is so different? So there is a colossal environmental element here. One of the problems with genetic testing is the notion of false comfort. Shannon, how many times do you hear people say, well, when they're contemplating their own risk for breast cancer, I don't have a family history. It's, it's false comfort. 95% of the people who get breast cancer don't have a family history. The vast majority of women who get it do not have a genetic risk. This, folks, breast cancer, is significantly influenced by environment. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But what about that BRCA test, the BRCA test? is a way to evaluate a gene that significantly increases your risk of breast and ovarian cancer. 
There are two types, the BRCA1 and the BRCA2. If you test positive, your risk of breast cancer goes up to 50% or more over the span of your life. Your risk of ovarian cancer goes up to around 40% over the span of your life. Who should get that test? Well, insurance will pay for it if you meet certain criteria. A, a first-degree relative, that's a, a mother, a sister, or a daughter who had breast cancer before the age of 50, or clusters of breast cancer and ovarian cancer in the family will justify insurance coverage. But suppose insurance doesn't cover it, what can you do? Suppose you just want to get that test. What does it cost? Well, we did a little research and the price for that test is anywhere from as little as $100 to as much as $5,000, depending on what else is included. The average price is in the neighborhood of three or 400. But we did found a company, it's called Color, C-O-L-O-R, that offers a home test for about a hundred bucks. You spit in a tube, you mail it off, and you get the result. I had to tell you, Shannon, a lot of doctors hate these tests, the home test. Why? Because they think you're a moron and you won't know what to do with the results. <laughs> That's it. It's the same reason doctors don't like you reading the internet. Yeah, it's a, you know, some, it's a reason why some doctors aren't fond of intellectual medicine, mm -hmm. because we're putting more of the onus on you, the patient, to be able to handle information that is nuanced. So you get the results of the test back and suppose it's negative. Well, the fear there is that you'll get false comfort. A negative test does not insulate you. Well, what if it's positive? Now you need some serious, some thoughtful, reflective counseling. They often recommend counseling with a geneticist. Good luck finding one. There are about two of them in the state. I recommend talking to your family doc. Look, nobody knows you better. Your family doctor is deep in knowledge and deep in personal commitment to you and has the capacity to reflect on this with you on more than just a technical level, because we're talking philosophy at that level. Now, Shannon, do you want to get a bracket test done? I do. I kind of do. So, you know, you don't have a mm -hmm. family history. No family history, but I have had cancer twice. Yep, that's very true. So. Melanoma twice. And it's uh, we know, we believe that one of the risk factors for catching any form of cancer is having had it in the past. So I kind of like the test. There's another one from Futura, F-U-T-U-R-A, that can test for a cluster of different genetically influenced diseases. And then there's a test called 23andMe, which tests 23 different chromosome pairs. Now, these tests have been criticized by some of the orthodox medical establishment. Look, they hate losing control, folks. And every time you take more direct ownership of your health, it's going to rattle somebody's cage. Right? But it's your information, and you have a right to get it. Hey, you know what? Speaking about information, you know what happens to all this medical data that's out there, Shan? They sell it. The information gets sold. So we need to highlight this at another what, show. What information? What are you talking about? All of your medical data that goes in, your, your biopsies, your lab tests, everything. They can scrub your name from it, and they can sell that block data to other agencies and entities who are interested in processing that information. Did you know that was happening? I had no idea. Nobody did. I thought it was all private. No, what no. What happened to that? Good Lord. Look, folks, uh, <laughs> look, they hack Equifax. The Russians hack our election. Anybody that has is naive enough to dump their medical information into some data bank on the pipe dream that doctors are going to collaborate is exposing themselves to risk, in my opinion. Not worth doing. But look, back to the breast cancer. So. In intellectual medicine, we believe in being proactive. Do not sit passively waiting for cancer to get you. There are the big three you must avoid to live a healthy 120 years. Number one, you can't die prematurely from heart disease. Number two, you must avoid cancer. Number three, you must protect your brain so you don't get demented. And number four, there are four, you must preserve physical and sexual vitality. Those are critical elements of quality of life. I suppose we could throw a number five, don't get blown up by a nuclear bomb, but that kind of goes without saying. Um, the point when it comes to cancer prevention is to look for the known triggers, right? What's the number one of the biggest environmental triggers is excess fat cells, people. Adiposity increases cancer risk, 14 different known types of cancer, including breast. So one of the key things you can do is get into a program such as at intellectual medicine, Losing fat and keeping it off is simply the hardest thing to do in all of medicine. And we have discovered and promote the most successful way to do that. And soon there'll be an intellectual medicine in East Providence. So we're bringing it closer to your home.
The next thing we advocate is that you get tested for known carcinogens in your system. Lead, mercury, aluminum can accumulate without your knowledge, can cause increased risk of cancer, dementia, and heart disease. I, I gotta ask something about this BRCA though. So let's say yeah. it comes back, right? Yes. BRCA positive. Deciding about a double vasectomy. That right. will cure it, you know, should I do it and be fine? Wow, that's a great question. The double mastectomy does profoundly reduce your risk of acquiring or dying from breast cancer if you are BRCA positive. However, you can still get breast cancer. Some of those cells can still be harbored within your body and can manifest elsewhere. Um, so the recommendations for that vary, but it is a reasonable step to take. The problem, Shannon, is you know, it comes down to cost. Mm -hmm. Our insurance company is gonna pay for that and the reconstruction necessary to preserve feminine self-esteem. Um, I'm not sure about that. You know, if you get a BRCA positive, that's, um, you know, let's do some research, folks. We will come back to you with that information at a later show. Um, but yeah, it's a deeply personal decision. We advocate that there are certain um, things you can do to improve your immune function that will help you to be more resilient against cancer. We know that cancer is limited in the human body in part by how well your immune function works. It's not an accident that we get more cancer as we get older because we get what's known as immunologic senescence, a weakening of the immune system that happens at or about age 45 and accelerates thereafter. There are some oral supplements that we advocate for as being healthy for you. And we do advocate for the reduction of these heavy metal toxins. And in some cases, the use of IV infusions on a regular basis. We've developed one at our center called the Time Machine. It's a mixture of calcium EDTA that pulls out heavy metals, high-dose vitamin C, high-dose B vitamins, L-arginine, L-carnitine, and biotin, among others, magnesium as well. By directly infusing them through the vein into the body, you can amplify all of those antioxidants and uh, acquire some health-enhancing merit. Now, these things are not proven to be effective with regard to diminishing cancer risk, but they are there are known risks that you can affect and you can manipulate. So reflecting on the, on the testing, uh, we are encouraging of people getting more information. And if it, if it motivates you to get the test done, then I encourage executing the test and bringing the result to your family doctor so you can review it together. Good information, Chan, out of the Journal of Urology, a big study done looking at the risk benefit of testosterone therapy in men with low testosterone levels. What they found was men who went on testosterone replacement therapy, if they had low levels, had better urinary function and better sexual function, no increase in prostatic risk. And as the author of the article states, completely debunks the risk of cardiovascular disease increase from Dr. Abdumajid Trayesh from the Boston University School of Medicine. The improvement in sexual function went from 17% men who were dissatisfied, or who were inadequate, um, I should say 17% who were satisfied with their sexual function, improved to 75% satisfaction on therapy. So think about it, folks. Better urinary function, better sexual function, enhanced muscle mass, enhanced brain function, what's not to like about keeping youthful testosterone levels? But here's the caveat, Chan, the definition of low testosterone, that's the rub. So they may do a test and say to you, well, your levels are normal for your age. That's, that's a big caveat, right? So the normal range, let's say for testosterone is somewhere between say 10 and 400 for free testosterone. And let's say you score a 12. How good are you feeling about that 12, right? You got a 12. How, how would you like it if you came home from school and um, you're, you brought home a grade, a grade of a D minus? And you said, but mom, it's normal. I got a D minus. That's a normal grade, right? It's a normal grade. That's passing. That's passing. Right. That's normal. So you got a D minus on your testosterone level. How are you feeling about that? What do you think, Maya? What do you think, Maya? Like a D minus on your, on your hormone levels? No. <laughs> Sign me up. Like, so... So here's the, the rub. Many, many physicians are reluctant to prescribe and treat relatively low testosterone for fear of being um, either critically uh, reviewed or because they just don't feel it's clinically appropriate. We maintain that keeping your 
hormone levels at that of a more youthful range is the healthiest way to move through life. Testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, pregnenolone, DHEA, thyroid, these are some of the hormones that drive the engine. And if they are kept at a more youthful level, we target 35 to 40. Why? Because we felt great then, didn't we? Wasn't that a wonderful age, Shan? I, I, I hardly remember it. <laughs> I'm kind of still, well, I'm not still in it, but you're you know, still in it, by golly. You're pretty close to it. But I had to tell you, folks, I feel better now than I did 10 years ago. And it has a lot to do with the things that we preach, that we practice, that those hormones, when they are robust, are going to make you feel better. And by golly, the more we research it, the more we realize all the risk mongering is artificial inflation. So Dr. Pederuti here at Intellectual Medicine, along with Shannon, bringing you a perspective every week on how to stay young, how to live to be 120, and keep your vitality along the way. Next up, Tony DeJesus, Big Blue Bug Solutions. You're listening to WPRO, the voice of Southern New England. We will see you again next week. Have a beautiful 120-year lifespan, everybody. We'll see you then.